Hello, good afternoon and welcome to Church of Uganda Family TV but specifically to Flourishing Hub. I remember this show immediately empowers or helps the youth uh, to be uh, better in society. So the people we bring here uh, do give us uh, encouragement, uh, do give us uh, their storyline of how they made it uh, in the particular industries they are in uh, so that uh, you, the youth, or me, uh, can borrow a leaf and of course uh, be better in society. You know, somehow, somewhere, uh, we, the young people, have been looked at as uh, kind of negative. So if you pay attention to what we discuss here, uh, it could really change your life. And today is a very, very beautiful day because uh, the person we are hosting is going to really interest you with so much information. But remember, our program is uh, centered on four pillars, one of which is money. So uh, we tame the youth on how to make money, uh, how to get the money, and how, of course, to use the money, uh, not uh, recklessly, of course. Then we also uh, have a strategy, you know, without a plan, you cannot sustain or you cannot uh, flourish in life. So you have to be with the plan. And also uh, the third one is uh, daring. We dare uh, the youth to so many uh, opportunities. You are not supposed to stick to one opportunity, but dare yourself in various uh, various opportunities. Then the last one is mentorship, where we bring uh, 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 people uh, to guide us. Because in order for you to uh, flourish, in order for you to develop, uh, you must have someone who has gone through something uh, that you want to do, and then they guide you or they help you uh, in, uh, in terms of uh, information and anything uh, that you could want with uh, wisdom so that you can uh, really develop. So today uh, we are going to be discussing on how uh, a, a particular person or a particular industry has been able uh, to move around because I understand recently uh, they celebrated 15 years, uh, which is uh, specifically I'm talking about uh, Serene Beauty, a very unique uh, uh, saloon. Uh, it is not uh, the regular saloons we know, very unique because they are centered on one thing, which is bridal and all, all that, all that uh, uh, setting. I may not be very conversant with the language, but yeah, and uh, I'm, I'm really honored to have uh, uh, Serena Tugume here today. Thank you. You're most welcome. Please greet the viewers out there. Hello, everyone. It's such a pleasure to be here today mm. to speak to you about a subject that's dear to my heart, mm. which is Serene Beauty. Mm. Uh, my name, like you introduced, my name is Serena Togome, and I lead the team at Serene Beauty. Mm. Um, Serene Beauty is a team of creative hair and makeup artists okay. who create the most beautiful bridal teams in Uganda. And like you said, we have been at this for the last 15 years, mm. making people beautiful and happy oh. on a very special day of their lives. Mm. That is really You're interesting. Welcome. Thank you so much. For and this is us. This is, we are hosting today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we are so. hosting Family TV and yeah. it's such a joy to have you here today. Wow. Thank you so much. So uh, first and foremost, to break it down, can you tell us what Serene Beauty is about? Serene Beauty really is um, our desire. Mm is to help women discover their God-given beauty. We believe that every woman is beautiful mm. and uh, with just the right care and skill, mm. they will meet their most beautiful version. Mm. And we love to do that mostly for women on their wedding days mm. because it's one of those very special days in their lives. Mm. That's not all we do. We don't only do weddings, but we mostly do weddings. Our key focus is weddings. Mm. But we also do teach, we love to teach, we enjoy teaching. So we teach how to do, how to do makeup, mm. your everyday person to know how to do their everyday makeup as they go to work, as they show up. Yes. You know, a woman needs to look after herself and she needs to, to come to, to present herself to the world well taken care of, well put together. Mm. Um, but also there are people that want to learn the profession of makeup, mm. so we also teach those. We teach people who want to learn hair, mm. so we, we have a passion for teaching. Okay. But our biggest passion is doing weddings, mm. working alongside women as they approach the, one of the most important days of their lives mm. and helping them achieve their most beautiful version. But we don't um, only do hair and makeup, mm. we offer a wholesome package which includes everything to do with their hair and makeup. We want our brides to rest when they come to us. We want them to rest from all the hustle and bustle of planning a wedding. Mm. And so we do everything for them. Hair, makeup, nails. We give all our brides a full body massage. 
because by the time they come to their wedding, they are so exhausted, and we want them to look fresh on the morning of the wedding. So all that is done here. All that is done here, and we also accommodate our bridal teams here. Mm. Those that prefer the option, mm. we have the option of accommodating them here and giving them breakfast on that morning, so that they are on time, and they are. They look beautiful. They are not stressed out the morning of the wedding, trying to locate each other so that they are on time and they are waiting and all of that. So they sleep over. We give them breakfast. The bridal cars pick them up from here and they take them to church. Mm. We are located on Mwanda Road, so we are easily accessible to most churches within the city. Mm. But also, there are brides that say, "Find me at the hotel. We go to them. We can't go to them." Mm. So. That's who we are. That's interesting. You have been here for 15 years. Yes. And uh, majorly, some of the aspects we follow for this program is uh, uh, telling the youth how to sustain a uh, given business. Yeah. How have you been able to sustain this, uh, mostly to that, to this standard, to this nice standard? How have you been able to consistently sustain this? I would say it's a process. Mm. You know, one of the you're talking to youth. <laughs> so I want to talk to the youth. Yeah. One of the biggest challenges that the youth in this generation have is mm. they want to get things quickly. Okay. They want to achieve everything very fast. Mm. And it's good to be quick, it's good to be fast, it's good to be ambitious and all that. Mm. But you need to realize that certain things have to happen. Mm. You need to take, to, take your time mm. to build something that is worth building. Um, so if you ask me mm. what has what, what would you attribute the success to? Mm. First of all, I would attribute it to God. Okay. I think that God has helped me mm. as the founder of the business to continually grow the business, looking at the needs mm. of the customer and creating solutions. That is really what business is about. Mm. A business f creates a solution for its client. Mm. That's how a business starts and that's how a business grows and thrives. Mm. If you're constantly looking and thinking, okay, what does my customer need? How do I get to them? Mm. So we started off doing makeup only. And for me, I started off doing makeup for myself and that's how it became a business, okay. was doing other people's makeup. Mm. And over time, I started to realize, okay, it's not enough to just do makeup, to mm. achieve a beautiful, happy bride. So I added on hair, and then I realized, okay, I can work on the brides in their hotel room. What about those who cannot afford paying for a hotel? So I started to host them. And then I realized, okay, many people are happy to be hosted, but you need to create space for that. Mm. So I created a conducive, beautiful environment to be able to achieve, you know, just that joy and peace and calm on the morning of the wedding. And the girl can be with everybody on her team and they can have a good breakfast that will take them through the day until their wedding reception. Um, so basically, you look at the needs of your customer yeah. and look for creative solutions yeah. to m fix that need. Okay. All this really was tied into the greater vision that I had, which was to create a beautiful experience for a bride on the morning of her wedding. Yeah. Where, where does this uh, uh, vision of only settling for the brides come from? I would say, uh, I think it's a personal interest. Okay. So, I can run an everyday salon, mm. wash hair, do all of these things. But I think I love weddings. Okay. I love weddings. I love, it's really how I started. I started off doing just weddings. Mm. And I have grown in doing weddings. Mm. I love weddings, I love love, but I'm also passionate about the whole thing of creating peace mm. and joy in a bride. So it's not just making them look good. And um, it's also how I'm gifted. Mm. And so I've carried this gifting within the team that I work with mm. to be able to provide that to brides. It's important. Um, a wedding morning is a special day. Mm because a bride is transitioning into a new life. Yes. And so creating just the most beautiful memories, we've kind of decided that as our niche. Mm. Yeah, because it's, in business, you have to do what you love. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, speaking about uh, this entire time, what are, what are some of the challenges you have met and how do you address them? 
I think every business meets challenges. Yes. The challenges are ongoing. Um, what are the challenges I have met? Mm. Um, one of the challenges I think has been to find the right people to work with. Mm. I think I've been blessed with good people. Mm. For you to do what we do, you need the right people. So being able to have clarity of who do you need on the team, that's a challenge. Mm. Because you will have some people that don't quite fit yes, yeah. and don't create what you want mm. and you have to manage that immediately mm. and make sure you have the right people. So that's one challenge. Mm. I think the other challenge that we faced over the last 15 years was for a big chunk of those 15 years, I had a full-time job, a full-time corporate job actually for almost 10 for about 10 years 10 yeah, years. yeah 10 years of that time yeah. of the 15 years i had a full-time corporate job and i used to do this as a side gig, side gig yeah, yeah. right yeah. i was busy i had a busy job i had i was quite busy during the week yeah. and so i would do this on the weekend that was a bit challenging because it meant that I'm not available during the week to attend to my clients. Yeah. So I had other people that are attending to them. Yeah. And sometimes they don't completely fully share your vision. Yeah. Um, but also, it means that there are many ideas you have that you can't quite implement yeah. because you're not always present. So, but that challenge was mostly fixed when I came on full time. Uh, in 2019. Mm. 2019, I decided this is it. I'm going to do this full time. Mm. So I came on board. So that it has allowed me to create a team to people that I work with, to offer them leadership and guidance and to mentor them and coach them and yeah. Okay. How do you stay? How do you stay updated to the latest trends and maybe technologies and you know, all that? Social media. <laughs> okay. The internet is our friend. <laughs> yeah. There's also AI. Did you know? Yeah, sure. You know, you can get ideas from AI. Mm. Anyway, I think social media just keeps me mm. updated. Okay. It's one of those things that I can't do without mm. in my media. business. Mm. Reading online, mm. you know, seeing what's happening around the world, mm. uh, making sure I'm, I have access to the latest, best mm. products on the market. I think, yeah, mm, okay. I would say that reading as well, mm. yeah. And reading, is, don't you think uh, somehow, somewhere, technology is also uh, affecting somewhat? Affecting? Mm, the, the, this business. I don't I mean, think so. People, uh, someone could easily go on the internet mm -hmm. and then they want to apply exactly what they have seen and then there is you who is natural. No. Mm. I think when you're gifted, okay. you're gifted. It just adds You up. know what to do, yes. Mm. People can look online and all of that and bring to you and ask that reproduce this. Mm. Yeah, that, that's a challenge and that pushes you to do better, okay. to step up your game, mm. yeah. Let me tell you, the internet mm. has made our lives better in business. Um, I see work that people do out of the country, out of this country, mm. and I'm really challenged, pushed to do better and just, you know, step up my game. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, without it, you kind of get comfortable with what you know, mm. with what you have, and then you can't deliver more. Mm. Yeah. Do you, do you have competition in this uh, sector? Mostly, you who chose a uh, bridal services. Of course. So, there's a time when we were the only ones that were doing, offering all of this, this complete package of mm. hair, makeup, money, I mean, the full service including accommodation and breakfast. Mm. I've seen some people also try to start that. Okay. It's normal. Mm. If you do something innovative and creative, mm. people will always think, ah, I can do that. Let me try that. Mm. You know, they say that... Um, if people can copy you, it's a compliment, okay. right? So I don't take offense. Yeah. The and thing is, you must always stay ahead. Mm. You must. Competition is good. Competition keeps you from being comfortable, mm. from settling. 
and the customer benefits. Mm. So the more competitive the market is, the better for the customer. Okay. Because it means that the service providers will constantly mm. reinvent themselves and come up with come out even better. Mm. So but the thing with competition mm. what I've learned over the last fifteen years is not to focus not to put too much focus on competition. Mm. When you put too much focus on competition, sometimes it takes away from who you are because then you try to be like competition. But I, I think that every business can be unique. Like I think our business is unique. Mm. Okay. Um, and, uh, okay. When you focus on yourself, mm. what's unique about you, and compete with yourself in terms of how can I make what I'm doing even better and better and better? It's more energizing mm. than focusing on what others are doing. Because when you focus on what others are doing, you miss what's good on the inside mm. and how you can make it better and how you can come out even better. Mm. And how do you stay on top of the game, <coughs> even with the competition? I think I've kind of touched on it. Mm. One way is to just not settle, to keep pushing yourself to be better. Mm. So one of the things I do is I look out for what's, what are the trends out there, how people do, where are we lacking, mm. where are the gaps inside Serenity, and then just challenge ourselves to go over that, mm. uh, constantly asking what new thing can we introduce, how can we make mm. the experience for our customers better. So when you have a business and you look inside, mm and you evaluate, you think about how to deliver the best to your client and then all the feedback that you get yeah. forces you to also sharpen what you have. So you improve what you have even as you seek to do better, to do more. Okay. Yeah. And uh, talking about customers, how do you maintain their loyalty to you? I think customers are loyal to a good thing. Yeah. The best way to keep customers loyal to you is by offering the best possible service. So our business is mostly driven by referrals. Oh. Referrals from brides that you have worked on. Mm. Two things actually, referrals and social media. Mm. So of course you have to keep sharing what you're doing online, mm. but the, the real test is in the, oh, they say that it is, the test is in, in the eating. Mm. The people that have actually experienced our services, are the ones who bring us more clients. That's what I say that our business is driven by referrals. Mm. So to stay ahead is to just keep happy customers. When you have happy, cu happy customers, mm. they keep bringing you more. Yeah. Okay. And uh, your marketing strategies, is it uh, social media or like just what you've said, what you do? It's mostly social media and referrals. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, now in this uh, challenging economy, for someone who wants to start uh, such a business, how do you advise them best? For someone who wants to start this business, mm. I think perfect your art, perfect your skills, mm. perfect your yourself, your character mm. as a person. Because customers come back to you because of the experience they have. Mm -hmm. Your skills, yes, you need to know what to do and do it very well. Mm. But more than anything, it's your character. Okay. So if customers have a good experience with you, with you, they'll come back. So if someone wants to start this business, I would say, make sure you are working on your skill, make sure you're working on your character, mm. your, your, the experience of the customer, and then just put in the work and be consistent about mm. the things that you must be doing every day. Just be organized. It's important to run a business like a business. Mm. I struggled a bit with that at some point mm. because I, I found myself doing a business. <laughs> I didn't plan to do a business in the beginning. Oh. In the beginning, I was just utilizing my skill. Mm. But eventually, I started to, I realized, oh, okay, this is something that can earn me a living, earn me some money. And I was very passionate about it. I was spending money on it. Mm. And so I needed to get the money back. But the earlier you 
organize your business and professionalize it the better. Yeah. Separate your personal money from the business's money. Thought it is all yours. Pull. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. It didn't work like that. <laughs> You yeah. have to separate the two. Yeah. Separate yourself and then the business. The business has to work like a business. Mm. But it's yours. Yes, mm. but you don't mix them. <laughs> <laughs> it's a business that runs on its own. Mm. Yeah, you should be able to check at the end of the year has the business made money? Okay. And if it has not, it's also okay mm. because then you work towards making it, getting it to a level where it actually does make money. Because then you can be able to tell, oh, the costs in the business are too high. Mm. How do we work on reducing our business costs? Where mm. is wastage? How can we make more money? Mm. How can we make this business more profitable? How can you do that if everything is mixed up? Mm. Okay. <laughs> and that happens, eh? Mm. For most young people, however small your business is, try and create order and professionalize it so that you can know if it's an idea worth investing your energy and time into. Okay. Yeah. I may be talking about uh, business. Uh, uh, it is, it is, 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 isn't there challenges where you feel like a customer is putting you on pressure, sort of? And how do you handle that? Maybe a customer is wants something urgent. Customers will put you on pressure. <laughs> okay. It is expected. Yeah. They are supposed to put you on pressure. Mm. Yeah, because they pay you. Mm. They pay you to do this work. Mm. So, first of all, you need to work in ways that do, that do not lead the customer to having to put you on pressure. Mm, okay. If you're organized and you know you're planning well and running your business properly, mm. a customer may not need to put you on pressure. Okay. If you're a tailor mm. and the customer has to put you on pressure, mm. there's a problem. <laughs> it means either you're not communicating well, mm. or you're not planning well, or you're not actually delivering your promise. Mm. So the customer doesn't have to put you on pressure, but if they did put you on pressure, mm. it's their right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, because they are paying you to deliver. Mm. Um, so if your attitude is, ah, ah, you're putting me under pressure, mm. then there's a problem. Okay. If, a do, customer, do if a customer put me under pressure mm. today, I have to stop after sorting out the customer. Mm. I need to stop and ask myself, let me evaluate what needs to change in my business so that we don't have to get to that. Mm. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. For those who have issues with customers and you find yourself uh, on uh, uh, the contrary, most times customers can annoy you and you find yourself mm. wanting to add you sort of. So please uh, do handle that. You can consume it because, well, you are there for that particular customer. So we are returning uh, to uh, Serena Tugume is still here with us telling us more interesting stuff about uh, the business and also, of course, how she managed to sustain it all through.